Carl, thank you very much for joining us here today. So, in 2016, Lincoln voted 56% in favour of Brexit. Do you think the city still has the same appetite for it three years on? Definitely. I'm sorry to correct you with your first question there, but actually in the city of Lincoln, yes, the constituency is made up of more than just the city. But in the city of Lincoln, it was 57.3% vote. But actually in the Bracebridge Heath, Waddington and Skellingthorpe areas, which is part of North Cassieven, it was a 66% vote to leave. So actually the true picture in Lincoln is that actually probably 60-40 voted to leave. And actually I've been out campaigning obviously since then, certainly a lot more in the last few weeks. And most people, certainly people who voted leave, want to see Boris succeed uh, and have that deal and move us out of the EU. But actually an awful lot of people actually voted to remain or perhaps didn't vote are actually fed up with politicians just procrastinating and, and talking around the subject. They want to see it done, and that's what Boris has said he wants to do. So hopefully with the general election that we're now having, the numbers will change in Parliament and we'll see us depart from the EU and Brexit will be achieved. Uh, surely though a, a quicker way of getting Brexit done, which the Prime Minister wants to do, would have been to uh, carry on with the deal that Parliament approved rather than call an election. Well, it starts coming down to the intricacies of Parliament and parliamentary rules. So, yes, Parliament actually voted, um, and it's the first time that one of the deals that was put forward was actually accepted by Parliament, but immediately the Labour Party and the Liberal Democrats and the other opposition parties then voted against what's called a programme motion, and that meant they stopped it. And they knew what they were doing, so some of them could say, oh, well, we voted to pass a deal, but actually they then voted to, to delay and, as I said, procrastinate and put off the, EU, uh, sorry, the UK departing from the EU. Boris brought a deal. Everybody said he couldn't get the deal reopened, he couldn't get the withdrawal agreement reopened. He did. He brought back a deal. He brought back a deal that politicians from all parties voted for, that passed through Parliament, but immediately the, the Labour Party and those um, Remainers who have never given up then voted against the programme motion to stop it happening. And they've done that for two and a half years. You know, the, the Article 50 was, um, was put in place and said there was a maximum of two years given for a withdrawal agreement to be agreed and signed up to. It didn't have to be two years. It could have been done in six months. But the Remainers have drawn out everything they can because they don't want to see us leave. They hate the fact that they lost the referendum. But as we've just discussed here in Lincoln, 60% of the people who voted, voted to leave back in 2016. And in true democracy, their will should be implemented. And uh, on the last election in 2017, would you say you've learned any lessons after your defeat in that election? You learn lessons at every single election you're involved with, whether that's local or national or European or for police and crime commissioners. Um, we learned an awful lot of lessons. I certainly learned a lot of lessons as well. Um, perhaps how low that the opposition will perhaps stoop. And um, unfortunately, they dragged all sorts of things, including my family, into into the election, which is you know nobody wants to see that. And actually, unfortunately, um, some of the things that have come to the fore uh, to do with politicians and how they are um, attacked and portrayed um, has been happening here in Lincoln. You know, since I arrived back in 2004-5, it's just that we didn't shout and ball about them from from the rooftops. Uh, it's an unfortunate part of politics. Anybody who puts themselves forward, whatever party, you know, it's good that they step into the arena. Um, but we need to be grown up enough and, and be pragmatists that actually we might have a disagreement on policies or how we might achieve different things. But actually, I've always said I, I want to be putting Lincoln first as the Member of Parliament. I did that for seven years, brought lots of positive investment to Lincoln. Once I have the chance and the ability to do that again as the Member of Parliament, which is why I'm standing as the candidate for the Conservative Party in the upcoming general election on the 12th of December. Uh, now, in, in this election, Brexit is obviously, as we say, going to be a major issue. Is there a danger, though, that you think it could end up being the only issue that's talked about in the campaign? Uh, there's a possibility that that might happen. Um, as somebody who campaigned across the East Midlands for Leave, and actually, if you go back from my time as a parliamentarian from when I was elected in 2010, I voted for a, a referendum before there was ever a referendum on the table. I was one of the original 82, um, obviously voted for us to have a referendum, thought the people needed the opportunity to have that vote. Uh, then, camp then campaigned right across the East Midlands for leave. And that's what I've always truly believed, that we should leave the EU and I've believed in the sovereignty of our own country. And actually, the, the people that we elect to Westminster should make the laws that we, are, that we live under uh, as the people in this country. So um, I've always believed that we, you know, we would be better out of the EU, but still trading with them, we still do trade. But actually, there's the rest of the world to trade with, whether that's with Commonwealth countries, which we have a proud history with, whether that's with emerging, whether it's BRIC countries, or whether it's with you know, America or China or Australia, New Zealand, all those people who've you know, been friends of this country for many, many years. We have a proud history of trading right across the world uh, and there's nothing to stop us doing that again. Uh, and in this election also, there's the talk of a need for a, a respectful campaign. Is that something you're going to be conscious of going forward in this campaign, do you think? Of 
course, we've always been respectful in the Conservative Party. I've got to be honest, we, we're always, we, we engage in a positive campaign. I can honestly say that I've never defaced a Labour Party poster. I've never removed a Labour Party poster. I've never put out something, you know, that wasn't um, properly done with an imprint and whatever. Can't say the same about the other parties. You know, none of the people who've been involved in my campaigns, we haven't got time to go and disrupt other parties' campaigns. So we, we, have, we always fight a positive campaign in the Conservative Party. We want to turn Lincoln blue. Uh, to join the rest of Lincolnshire. Um, so I'm looking forward to the hustings and the debates uh, and examining the policies of the other parties, whichever part they are. You know, the Liberal Democrats really aren't liberal and I wouldn't say they're really de democratic in the fact that they just want to ignore what happened in 2016. Uh, the Labour Party said they want another referendum, not just on the EU, but also on splitting up the union with um, enabling Scotland to leave. Well, I don't want to see that either because I'm a proud Conservative and Unionist. And with my surname, I have a history with both Scotland and uh, Northern Ireland. So I'll be fighting for all those things as the Conservative candidate and hopefully um, should the good people of Lincoln vote for me in the appropriate numbers, a majority, I'll be lucky enough to be the Conservative Member of Parliament again here in Lincoln. Do you think that your politics has always been as respectful as it can be in the past though? I mean there's incidents such as you accuse the Lincolnite of doing a hatchet job on you after the last election defeat, do you think it's always been respectful your politics? Well I think anybody, anybody was subject to what the Lincolnite and others organised to do in the run-up to the general election polling day um, and spreading of fake news which was proved to be incorrect, I surely, I'm, su I'm sure anybody else in the same situation as me would have felt exactly the same and perhaps would have said an awful lot more. Uh, now on the other policies then, what would your priorities for students be, do you think, if you were elected as MP for Lincoln again? Um, to ensure they en enjoyed their time when, when they're here at, at university at Lincoln, um, to enjoy, I, I, I don't differentiate between students and everybody else, I've always said. You know, Lincoln is a beautiful city. I was very lucky to represent it, very lucky to have enjoyed it with my family since we moved here in 2004. And like I've always said, I've always been putting Lincoln first, whether that's for the people who live here, whether they work here, whether they travel here you know, as tourists or for business, or whether they study here. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with Lincoln, I just think it could be, could be even better. And that's one of the jobs I think of you know, a member of parliament from whichever party. If you're lucky enough to represent any constituency in the country, you should want to do best for the constituency you represent. I would say that for the past two and a half years we haven't had that at all and that's why I'm standing again to be the Conservative Member of Parliament because I think there are lots of good things we could do, whether that's park and ride, whether that's improving the infrastructure or the offer to students at the university. You know, one of the things back in 2011 I was fighting for was for a medical school, yes because that helps the university and obviously brings more students but also it helps not just here in Lincoln, obviously the NHS but actually right across the county in retaining and attracting uh, medical staff. Uh, now, finally, then, on to a few uh, quick-fire questions. Are you still opposed to same-sex marriage? Um, we've had legislation that's passed through. We've all moved on, so I don't have a problem with that. Uh, and uh, what is your favourite thing to do to relax when you're out and about in Lincoln, would you say? Oh, crumbs. Probably have a pint of beer, to be honest with you, but actually just spend time with friends or family. But I love going to the Usher Gallery, one of my favourite parts in Lincoln. We have the castle, which we're right next to, with the Magna Carta. The cathedral is lovely, but there's lots of hidden gems as well, whether it's Museum of Lincolnshire Life, whether it's Margaret's Tea Rooms. So big shout out to Des and his lovely different teas uh, and cakes got to say I do like cakes as well but actually whether it's going to rugby on a Sunday where I coach the under 13s watching sport I still try and play sport and probably the fattest and slowest fly half in the country um, and I was always better at football so I still like having a kick around whether that's with friends five aside full aside although um, as I'm getting older I get slower definitely although there's walking football isn't it I've not tried walking football yet I'm not sure I'll be able to do that but we'll have to wait and see but yeah I, I like relaxing in all sorts of different ways classic cars is probably another um, but I'm, I try not to be a political anorak, shall we say. There is a life out there apart from politics. Now, politics is a very serious business, but I've always said if you can't have fun in politics, then you need to ship out and do something else. And finally, talking about the need for a respectful campaign, is there anything you can tell us that you admire about one of your local opponents in this election, do you think? The fact that they're willing to put themselves into the arena and, and fight for what they believe in. That's what we all do, and good on them for doing it, whether that's you know, one of the main parties. I was down at a briefing earlier this week. I think there's going to be a Liberal candidate. I think the Green Party might well have a candidate. Um, you know, Brexit Party might well have a candidate. There might be some independents, some people who have been involved with the football club. There's all sorts of different people. Well, fair play to them for putting themselves forward. It's an exciting time, any election is. Um, I've always really enjoyed elections, I enjoy talking to people, meeting people on the doorstep, having conversations about all sorts of different things. You learn so much more about people and what they feel. Um, so yeah, good, good for them putting, for putting their names forward. It's not easy, it's, you know, it's quite tough, 
Uh, it's certainly been tough on, on my family, as it has been for lots of other politicians, of all different persuasions right across the spectrum. Um, but, you know, you, you, you can't be intimidated. You've got to stand up for what you believe in. Uh, and I can look at myself in the mirror at night, as my dad always told me and my brothers. You know, I can be proud of the things I've done, and I am proud. I'm very lucky to have achieved what I've achieved. Um, but talking to you and, and the students at Lincoln, I know that I had second and third chances, if you like, in my educational history. And it's only through my education that I've been lucky enough to achieve what I have done so far in my life.